Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name's Adam Payne, County Administrator and Co-Chairman, Co-Chairman, see I've done it again, <laughs> Co-Host of this program with County Board Chairman Roger Destrudy. And as you know, every month we strive to bring a different program, service, department, uh, raise awareness about the good work that county employees are doing. And we have uh, some newer folks in county government, in fact, a newer department head, who recently ran very successfully for the clerk of courts, Melody Lorgi. Welcome, Melody. Thank you. If you've been at the courthouse to pay a fee or a fine, or you've been involved with the circuit courts or, or jury, uh, you probably have some knowledge of the clerk of courts, but if not, you're gonna get some good information today. And Melody has brought along one of her good friends all the way back from high school. They both just graduated from high school a few years ago. And with her today is Jennifer Zimmerman. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. Let me start with Melody. Melody, just share a little bit about your background. I just shared you're from Sheboygan County. Uh, where'd you grow up? Um, in Sheboygan Falls. I have been a resident of Sheboygan County my whole life. Um, I married to my husband, Mike, for 26 years. I have two adult daughters daughters, um, Ashley and Carly. Yeah. So. And you have been with the county for how long? Um, I will be with the county um, 28 years next month. 28 years next month. I'll bet yeah. you folks can hardly believe that looking and, at you. And here. boy, have things changed in the, in the department over the years since then. When I started, I was the family clerk way back when, and the way we did the docketing was way different. No computers. Um, we used these big old docket cards and everything was typed, manually typed. I'll be darned. So and today? Technology has really changed. Yeah. And you worked for years as the chief deputy to Nantod, or was that more recent? Um, that was more recent. That was probably two and a half years ago. Okay. I started doing that. And um, some folks may recognize that name. Nantod was our, with the clerk of courts for, I think, over 30 years. I believe it was 35 years 35 or 36 years. years. Long time running yes. clerk of courts and decided to retire and Melody decided to step up and run for office and did quite well. Yes, yeah. thank you. And with Melody today, as I said, is Jennifer. Again, back to, we just learned this off the air. High school uh, classmates, a couple years apart. Yes. And you've been with the county for now 26 years? 26 years. And what's your role in the clerk of courts office? I am the Chief Deputy Clerk of Courts to Melody. Yeah. And from the area as well? I am from Sheboygan County. I've lived here all my life. I'm married to my husband, Mark. I have adult grown daughter, Erica, and a son, Jacob, at home. And I started in the Clerk of Courts office as a filing clerk, and then I proceeded into the accounting department, and now I am her Chief Deputy. So you both have two adult children out of the nest. Out of um, the nest? Still on the payroll. Still on the payroll, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My youngest is graduating from high school this year, so my wife and I are going to be empty nesters for the first time this fall. We have three children, so I'm right with you. In fact, I know, I won't, I won't say our age, Melody, but Melody and I are high school classmates. We both graduated the same year. <laughs> so the clerk of courts, it's an elected position every four years, Correct. and you were just elected when? Um, I took the new term as of January 5th of this year, Okay. my first term. And now you're no longer the chief deputy, as, as uh, your classmate here is, Jennifer. You are the director. How's yes, it been I going am. so far? Real well. It's been going real well. Yeah. My sense, I've heard nothing but positives. You've got good people around you, a seasoned Definitely. staff. How many staff do you have? Um, 24. 24. Mm -hmm. And what are the roles and responsibilities of the clerk of courts? If someone has never heard of it before, never stepped in the county courthouse, what does the clerk of courts do? We are the keeper of the court records, um, and we also are, the, are responsible for jury management. Um, we provide um, court personnel to the courtrooms, to all five courtrooms, and the family court commissioner's um, B10 courtroom um, to take minutes for the office. So a lot going on. Right, and we also collect all the fines, um, fees, and filing fees. So you mentioned there's five circuit courts, and if you're not familiar with that, we have five courts that are run by state judges, and your staff helps support those judges. What kind of work do they do to help the judges be successful? Um, 
Well, like I said earlier, we provide clerks to go to court and take the minutes, take minutes. in which they come back to the, um, to the office and we have staff that um, process the paperwork, mm -hmm. um, do the jail papers, um, send out notices, um, enter the, you know, all the information in the computer that was set in court. Right. Um, put, yep. assess the fines. That's when the fines are actually assessed, if any are assessed, and then. Um, Perfect. So if I'm not going to court, but I've gotten a speeding ticket, which I'm sure some of our viewers have, and I have to pay that I can come to the clerk of court's office and, and pay that there as well. Is that right? Correct. And how does that work? Is, do I have to wait in long lines to get well, assistance? What happens? Sometimes. I mean, it depends. Um, some days we can be very o overwhelmed in the, in the office, um, but usually it's not too big of a waiting period. Um, we do accept um, credit cards now at the front window. We recently got a, a swipe machine. Um, it makes we can, it a little easier for people. Right. Yeah, good. And obviously we accept cash and um, checks and money orders. Do you prefer cash? Yes, we prefer cash. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, fortunately, I haven't been in there recently. I know my daughter was in there about a year ago paying a, a speeding ticket. And, of course, people don't have to come to your office to pay a speeding ticket. They can send that in the mail, right? I presume Correct. that's what most people do. And you can also pay online. Very good. The other area that your office deals a lot with, and frankly, I find it rather amazing how smoothly it goes, is you are responsible for administering and putting together all these jury notices and reaching out to the community and asking them to serve, which is a very important responsibility of people in the community. How does that work? How, how do you go about randomly selecting people to, to be on a jury? Well, we request 6,000 names that come from the Department of Transportation. Um, we, and as you said, they, they are picked randomly. Um, we get a, it's put into our system electronically. And then um, from those um, names, um, we send out jury notices or jury questionnaires to the people, um, which they fill out, you know, the questions and they send it back to us. And we also now, um, you can also do it online. So if you prefer to do it online and not send it in the mail, you can do that. And nice. I don't recall that. When was that change made? Um, I think just, um, I'm not real quite sure, maybe six months. Last, within the yeah, last year? Yeah, okay. I believe so. Yeah, very good, very good. So. so once an individual receives that letter, and I can recall the first time I received it, I thought, oh, this could be kind of interesting. I've never served on jury duty. And ultimately, I wasn't able to because being a county employee, the judge excused me. Correct. But they get that notice, and then what happens? Well, when we talked about the questionnaires, uh, those um, just because you got a questionnaire doesn't mean that you're actually going to be served, serving on a jury. Um, when we get those back and we put every, all the information in the computer, um, some people aren't eligible. So out of all those, we probably get like 3,500 people that actually qualify to serve as a juror. Okay. Wow. So, so is it you and your staff's responsibility kind of to go through the questionnaires and pare it down a little bit? And then right. We have a jury click that takes care of okay. all that. And then they come in, and I can recall this a little bit, although it's been a while, they come in and the, the judge is there and the attorneys are there, I think, from both sides. And then they go about selecting jurors and they may ask questions of them, what have you. Correct. So even if you get that notice, to your point, you may ultimately never serve on the jury because either Absolutely. you're not so selected, for some reason you're weeded out, or the case is settled. Correct. And there's no need for a jury. Yeah, I would say that um, of all the cases that are scheduled, um, we have different, um, we have pools of jurors. There's like 240 um, jur people's names that are in a jury pool, and then it's split up between four different panels okay. of a panel of like 60 jurors. Hmm. So that are, and then they have maybe a list of eight scheduled court dates on your calendar when you get your court calendar. 
So on a Sunday evening is when it's, there's a number on there that you need to call and then um, the automated system will let you know when you need to report, if you need to report or you know, if, there, if you know, the trials are off right. or whatever. But Excellent. I would say that of all the trials scheduled, probably 14% of them actually go. Really? Mm -hmm. That little? Right. 14% mm -hmm. actually, wow. Oh, so if you're looking forward to serving on jury duty, the odds are against you. Which we do have people that really want to be on jury duty. Right. So right. they want to know how they can get on jury duty, but obviously, you know, we, we aren't allowed to just put people on the jury panel. You right. have to go through the, through the ropes. And it's I really your earlier. civil duty to respond when you're selected. Correct. And employers need to be good about accommodating their, their staff to be sure that they're able to serve. Correct. Yeah, very good. Well, let me turn so. to Jennifer for a minute. We've, we've let you just stay out of the limelight for a <laughs> second. Let's bring everything right back. You are the chief deputy. What's the responsibility of being the chief deputy? To assist Melody with anything that she needs. That's why she's so successful? That's right. So I'm going to learn from her. I see. <laughs> learn from her, but then again, you've been with the department, as you said, for 26 years, right? Yes. So what have been some of your roles and responsibilities? Um, I did start out as a filing clerk mm -hmm. at our front window, and then I moved to the accounting department. That was my main responsibility for over, what, 12 years or so. Okay. Um, and then for the last two years, I've been um, helping out with Chapter 51's filing because we had another clerk go to court. So I have spent a lot of time doing that, which took away from the procedures that I did, like collection and Department of Revenue for the unpaid fines that people didn't pay. And Chapter 51, you mentioned that. What, what's Chapter 51? Those are um, mental commitments. Right. And right. There's a lot of time sometimes involved in that, scheduling them if they're scheduled out of the county or right. in the county. And then you also mentioned collecting fines, and I'll ask a couple of questions there and, and uh, turn it over to uh, Roger. Um, well, let me just ask one because I don't want to steal Roger's thunder. Collecting fines is obviously one of the key responsibilities that your department has uh, annually. You know, what, what kind of... What are we talking about here? In fact, Melody, I think I forgot to ask you, what's the department's annual budget? Uh, $2 million. So you've got a $2 million budget, and you've got, I think you said, 24 staff. Correct. I mean, a lot going on that you're overseeing. And within these roles and responsibilities, one of them is collecting the fines, which we talked about earlier. Any feel for annually how much you're collecting in fines? Um, Roughly $2.9 million. $2.9 million. Okay. Well, with that set up, I'm going to turn it over to the chairman. Roger. Thank you, Adam. And uh, great to have you both here. And uh, a lot of good things are happening in the uh, court system, but it is a busy court system. And approximately how many cases would be heard or, or how many a, a year? Do you have any idea on that? Uh, um, last year, um, we had about... 13,700 cases filed in our department. Um, 6,000 of those were um, traffic and ordinance cases. Mm -hmm. um, roughly 2,300 of that was criminal, criminal traffic and felony cases. Um, 3,000 of that was small claims. And then the rest um, were family, uh, criminal, or I mean, excuse me, civil and juvenile and probate cases. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about the fines that people have to pay and uh, how many dollars get collected and uh, how much of that do we keep and does most of it really go to the state or they, yes. they just make us be the bad guys yes. and collect the majority it, of the money goes to the state. Mm -hmm. Of that $2.9 million I spoke of, um, we get to keep roughly 860000 of that. And you said earlier that your total budget is two million. Correct. And you're collecting two point two point nine. Two point nine million. And you get to keep eight hundred and sixty thousand of it. Correct. So that tells me, Mr. Chairman, that county taxpayers must be uh, subsidizing the <laughs> operations of this mandated program. Correct. That's right. And, but uh, 
the, the state will tell you that they're, the judges are state employees. They pay for that. And uh, the DA, I believe all of those people in the DA's office are, are state employees Correct. also. And um, that's what they'll be arguing, that they're, they're supporting quite a bit of that also. But, uh, but not all of it. And uh, we have to pick up quite a bit of the, bit of the difference like that too. So. And, um, and some people, um, I know that the, the forfeitures and fines can be a problem. Uh, are there ways that we can get money uh, from, for instance, some of the, uh, the prisoners are assessed, uh, the jail assessment fee, and that is one way that we can collect something to help us pay for the jail and that. But that's one of the few ways that we are able to uh, to get the money back, isn't that uh, correct? Correct. And uh, uh, again, I appreciate all the, the good work you do, and there's, uh, there's a lot of things uh, happening in the court system, and uh, thank you both for doing your job very well. Thank you. I noticed she smiled the largest when you said the state gets to keep most of the money, don't they? And <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a smile of happiness or, yeah, uh, that's how it works. It's very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Melody and her predecessor, Nan Todd put together a really nice paper with the assistance of our finance director mm -hmm. years ago, as you know, Roger, that outlined that here we have this 100% mandated program. I mean, this is a one-on-one -on -one lesson in government. The state essentially tells county government what they should do, and we have mandatory and discretionary programs. The clerk of courts is really 100% mandated. We have to provide these services but the state doesn't provide the revenue to help pay for the operations. We do have the ability to collect these fines and forfeitures, as you heard earlier, what, 2.9 million a year, yet we're not able to keep sufficient revenue to cover our costs. So the property taxpayer, you and I, pick up the difference. Chairman Testrudy's right on. The state obviously picks up other responsibilities as well, but the way it's supposed to work is if one level of government mandates to another level of government you're supposed to do something, uh, generally the dollar should follow through on how to do that or it's an unmanned, uh, it's an underfunded uh, program. But in any regards, as Melody said, it can be a little frustrating because when we have one size fits all state imposed property tax caps in place, it's difficult to give employees cost of living increases or health insurance increases or whatever it may be because we're, we're, it's challenging, it's challenging. But I digress. Let's get back to your department and what's and the good things that are going on. Back to the collections. Now I know you and your staff work really hard to collect these funds, mm -hmm. but in some cases people just don't have the means Correct. to pay, right? Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. And for years, I mean, that builds up on the books. What's, what's the general trend there? Do you find that most people are able to pay, but it's, you know, what's, give us a little flavor for that challenge. Well, we work with people. We really try to. Um, but, you know, with the economy over the last several years, you know, it hasn't been good for, you know, some of the defendants and, and finding jobs and keeping jobs. So, but we, we allow them to go on payment plans. We set up payment plans. Um, and we, we do try to you know, collect the money. We, we send out reminder notices to people. Um, we suspend driver's licenses. Um, we suspend um, their um, DNR, DNR, license. DNR licenses. Mm. Um, we that do would motivate me to pay. <laughs> so they can't hunt or fish right. until they pay? Yeah, right. I, I would imagine that would be effective. Um, we also um, do tax intercepts, and we send out commitments for criminal cases. And if nothing else works, then we, we will use a collection agency as a and, final. As a final step. Mm -hmm. And again, and then there's some folks who just never pay. Correct. And those dollars are... Just right. never fulfilled and people aren't held accountable essentially right. for that, right? But our staff really tries hard to collect the money. Yeah, yeah. So and they and you've got, and let's t talk about your staff for a little while. It seems to me you've just got some great staff. We do. Really experienced, hardworking. Very. I mean, we are very fortunate. Um, Sheboygan County is very fortunate to have such good 
workers because they really work hard. Um, there's a lot of um, paperwork that goes through our department um, and they're very knowledgeable um, about their jobs yeah. and, um, and they are, I don't know, I just can't say anything bad about them at all. They're just, it's great. And they're probably folks who don't get a lot of pats on the back because they're in positions where when you're collecting you know, penalties, fines, right. forfeitures. You don't have necessarily happy customers at right. the front desk, right? Absolutely. Yeah, kind of like child support. I've always right. tipped my hat to those staff as well because that's, that's tough. That's tough, it yeah. Is. Well, I'm glad you're surrounded by such a good team, and I think it shows, as Roger said, uh, Clerk of Court's office, I think, provides excellent service here. Five circuit court judges relying on it. I've never heard a complaint from our judges about your good staff. And uh, it, ju it just seems like you continue to make good things happen. So thank you both for that. Thank you. Um, as you mentioned earlier, technology's evolving so much. I mean, it's just really taken off. What services are available online? What, what you, you mentioned you can complete the jury applications yep, the jury, online. Is the there jury anything questionnaires else? questionnaires online. Um, um, you can um, pay. Pay your fines. You pay directly and, online. Correct. Okay. Um, Through the Sheboygan County yeah. website, there's a tab on there where you can pay the fiends directly, or you can go directly to the clerk of courts um, department, and there are several things on there. There's like right. abbreviation to small claims. There's divorce information on there. Information about traffic. Right. Um, there's links on there to link you to the WCCA site where you also can go on there and pay your fees online. Or there's forms if you would need a small claims form or a motion. Um, there's several I do or how do I do this nice. opinions on there. Things. And Mel is going to update the Sheboygan County site um, because the WCCA site now has Visa and MasterCard in which it was just one. Okay. So she's if in I the process of that. In the Please. Home. One thing that uh, I know we've, uh, we've had some questions about and we've upgraded the technology part of it as you walk in the courthouse, it's such a big courthouse, there's five courts, people walk in, where to go? Now we have a kiosk Correct. that's really great when you walk in the courthouse mm -hmm. in the front door. Um, maybe either of you can explain what buttons you can push and uh, I believe there's quite a few choices that'll get you to the right place, isn't it? Yeah, there's, I think you can either enter your name or case, case number, um, and it just brings you right to, a, to the calendar. And it'll point so, you to the right. judge that the court is held in. I think Correct. that's a choice, or you know which judge it is, you don't know where it is, or you know the case number, and then you can help direct yourself to where you need Correct. to go, isn't it? So that's another point point of technology yeah. that's helped quite a bit. Right. It's an area we're trying to continue to improve mm -hmm. based on some feedback you and I received right. within the last year. We, in fact, Roger and I were in the front door and there was a young lady looking to find some room mm -hmm. or department and was struggling and it just, and, and Roger I think made the comment, boy, a kiosk or something like that would be beneficial mm -hmm. as well as, as we've discussed at department heads, as you know, Melody, getting some better signage in right. the building. It's such a beautiful building, but if you've never been in it, it can be a little intimidating and where do I go, so. Mm -hmm. And we also are very fortunate to have that um, desk there where we have volunteers sitting right. there. Yes. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's good to see a lot of them are retirees from, from the county right. that work there. So, so they got a pretty good feel yeah. for things. Yeah, that's a great so point. So they direct people yeah. and that's really nice. Yeah, it sure is. Any new programs or new initiatives that you're considering under your new leadership of the Clerk of Courts Office? Well, we would like to start e-filing soon. And eventually we would like to go paperless. Okay. Um, it's something we're, we're working on. Um, so when you say e-filing, for example, what does that mean? We'd like um, to you can file documents um, by the computer. Okay, so everything on the mm -hmm. computer rather than having to come in at all or ever have to wait Correct. in the line. Correct. Very good. We have um, worked towards this already. Um, we've been scanning documents already for a year and a half. So, I mean, we're 
just waiting for a few more components that we need to, to eventually go paperless. So the scanning the documents is show the history of past occurrences or, or you're scanning in forms? We're scanning in all documents that we would, that we also would um, dock it into the actual court record. Gotcha. And then of course the judges need to support this going paperless and Correct. I've been involved in some of those discussions with yeah. the judges and I know that's a, you know, that's a big step. I think they're, you know, coming they're around. coming around and yeah. I think it's really great because um, if, you know, you can just go on a case now and you can find the paperwork right on the computer. It's, you can pull it up and it brings it up and you don't need to actually pull a file or if the file's not where it is, you know, if it's up by the judge or JA or wherever. Right. I mean, you have it right at your fingertips. Right. So it, right. it's... Well, it's, I know it can be done because Chairman Destruti and the county board went paperless here, what's it been, three, four years now? Yes. And there were some members of the board, like our friend Dick Bemis, who, you know, is a more senior board member and a few others who I don't think were real enthusiastic and now, we hear consistently, everyone really appreciates mm -hmm. having all that information available at their fingertips right. and they don't have to carry around big binders right. or cut down a forest every meeting to distribute right. information. So it's worked out pretty well. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, well, that's a great really? initiative. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Well, thank you both for taking time to join us today. It, it, Melody, it's, I'm so pleased to have you as our new clerk of courts. I was pulling for you when you ran. I know you were running against one of your coworkers, so I know we had two good people running. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I appreciated about your uh, campaign was you ran as an independent. And uh, in my opinion, county government is largely independent. You know, mm -hmm. We don't spend the time that the state and federal government does uh, with partisan issues. It's very nonpartisan. And I've always felt all of our elected department heads, whether you're the clerk of courts or county clerk or treasurer, why do these have to be partisan positions? You know, frankly, some would argue, why are they even elected? They could be appointed department heads like the other. But I admired you for running as an independent because sometimes folks are always pulling the D or always pulling the R and, and you did very well. So it's good to have you with us and thank you for your nice overview today. Thank you very much. And Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's great to see another face from the Clerk of Courts, and thank you for your 26 years of service to Sheboygan County. Thank you. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Pretty impressive. And thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about the Clerk of Courts office, you want to talk to Melody or Jennifer and, and follow up on something they shared or you have a suggestion for improvement, don't hesitate to reach out to us. We do have a pretty nice county website where there's uh, information there on how you can get a hold of these folks and if you're never sure you can always contact our county clerk's office or my office chairman Testrudi's office and we'll get you the right telephone number and also if you have any suggestions for programs or services you'd like focused on in the future again don't hesitate to call us or your county board supervisor next month we're going to have our hr director here jean gallimore she's going to talk about this immense compensation study that the county board just passed and some really nice changes for county government. Took a lot of hard work and I know she's very proud of what all played out there. So until then, have a great summer. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you soon.